And we are back. Pokemon Sapphire Hardcore Nuzlocke only using ground type Pokemon. We've only got Glacia, Drake, and Steven left. Can we win this Nuzlocke run on our fourth attempt? Alrighty, here it is Glacia, the third member of the Elite Four with her ice type Pokemon. She has been such an issue throughout this entire run, but we are here in this moment. We send out our starter citrus here, getting those mud slaps down, not only chipping Glalie each time we use it, but also dropping that accuracy. And the fact that citrus only takes neutral damage from the ice type moves is absolutely everything here. So Swampert leading the charge, showing its buddies what needs to be done here as we're going to try to set up and take down Glacia's team. The light screen comes down. Now, ground type moves are physical in this gen, so we got to watch out for that. The mud slap continues to rain down. Glalie is looking at a minus four accuracy clip. The ice beam sees through the lies. The hail continues to fall, and now we are potentially dead here, but we do have a citrus berry on citrus, absolutely, and we could potentially roll one more turn or just accept the fact that we have a plus four or minus four accuracy in that regard as the ice beam does connect through the disguise that we have set up. The hail continues to fall. Now, the beauty in camera is its path. Uh, is it magma armor? It cannot be frozen. So even if Glalie sees through as it's been doing with those ice beams, we cannot get frozen on top of that. We have rest so we can rinse repeat this as much as we need to. And honestly, at this point, Glalie is almost out of ice beams. It's just if we die before we can get the rest off, that is the problem. As it cheeses another hail here, we get another amnesia proc. So unless we get crit right here, right now, we are going to be absolutely golden as we are going for that plus six amnesia with the rest cheese and the quick claw plop. The quick claw pops there and camera actually goes first, which is absolutely massive. And look at that amnesia paying dividends here. The camel stands firm in the hail. We're going to go for one more amnesia and try to max out that special defense, keeping the camera up as safe as possible as the hail continues to fall. Very annoying damage there, but there is the ice beam missing. Clearly is running out of time, is running out of ice beams, which is absolutely beautiful. We're going to go for one final amnesia to get that plus six. And now Cherry is primed and ready. And now we're going to do one more rest, potentially, or just start five firing away. Really, the Walrein's going to be an issue, and any critical hit through that amnesia is absolutely going to be troublesome. So we're going to go for that flamethrower. We are asleep for two turns, and again, we cannot be frozen given our passive. However, the crunch breaks through the amnesia, and we drop all the way to 39 HP upon the turn that we take out the Glalie. So that is super unfortunate, and one more critical hit could spell disaster, but I do believe we're going to be able to outspeed the chunky seal here and get back to full HP. But again, that's two turns we're going to be under, and if this surf crits, it doesn't even matter because plus six amnesia changes nothing when you're a chunky seal oh my god so all of that the last five minutes just goes out the window that entire setup is gone and now we're gonna have to go to plan b and now we're trying to set up potentially with the Whizcash, and I don't think Celio has any ability to freeze us. Uh, maybe a Blizzard, potentially, but it's definitely going to be going for the Surf since it's 100% accurate and does good damage. So same thing, we're just going to get some Mud Slaps down, try to keep the Seal at bay here, and we could potentially risk the Sand Slash, but I don't think so. Let's just go straight into Wiki, who should be able to tank those Surfs if they see through that accuracy debuff. So a really unfortunate circumstance, but I don't think Camera would have been very useful against Drake. So we take that for what it is as a body slam comes down and now we are paralyzed. So now we are walking into uncharted territory. But if we can get a plus six amnesia down, the walrus becomes so much easier to deal with. And we also have rest on wiki. So we just got to watch out for these things as we get those amnesia procs up and at them. The Celio continues to rain down body slams. Thankfully, rest doing work. We are asleep one more time. Another body slam comes down. The hail continues to fall. This isn't everything you want it to be, but we are doing the best we can with what we have as we go for another rest here, hoping that Celio can miss once or twice just to keep our health bar as high as possible. Also, the hail turn does buy us a little bit of time, but as you can see, this is not a perfect strategy. This is such a difficult run, especially coming to Glacia. We do get a fadeaway crit there but these ice slash water types against a fully ground type team is just the hardest thing ever as you have seen here but Celia level 52 the second one comes down a little bit of upgrade as we get a nice earthquake however the blizzard comes down it does connect to the bad accuracy and we hold on no problem with the amnesia again we are absolutely dead to crits we are dead to rights here as we get a not very effective surf trying to get the earthquake in range as a blizzard comes down and if that crits it's all over but we hold on with 
68 HP. We could go for another rest here. It's going to buy us two turns. It's going to buy us two turns as Celio connects on another Blizzard, and we are absolutely flirting. We are also flirting with freezes as we dodge two more Blizzards, and I do believe Celio is out, and it's out of life. It's out of time living here as an Earthquake comes down, and the final Glalie is here that only leaves the big bad Walrus herself and the Glalie. So we're going to have to tank a physical Shadow Ball. But that It does get the special defense drop, though, because Gen 3 is Gen 3. As another Shadow Ball comes down, dropping our special defense once again, so we essentially lose an Amnesia proc, and we're going to go ahead and get that back as the full restore comes down. That might mean Gla uh, Glacy is out of full restores, though, as we eat another critical hit there. The Earthquake comes down, gets Glalie. Oh my god, it one-shots Glalie, and now we are at 59 HP against a Walrus. We are at 59 HP against a Walrus. This Walrene has taken everything, has taken everything we hold dear in the previous runs as we are going in for the Earthquake, but we are still fast asleep. This is going to be the turn that we wake up as we take another Body Slam. A Paralysis or Crit could spell disaster as we lean into a Stab Earthquake. Gets a little bit of damage. The Sheer Cold comes down and absolutely Vanilla Wafers, thank goodness. Another Earthquake comes down. We're going to need one more. And Wall Ring drops back and connects on a Sheer Cold. Gets a one-hit KO and a Hardcore Nuzlocke and Wiki is gone. Wiki is absolutely gone. Wizcash, remember me for who I was, not for who I have become as we get absolutely deleted and destroyed so now we have four pokemon all devastatingly weak to the walrus the only one that doesn't die instantly is citrus who is at 58 hp so this walrus could absolutely wipe us oh as the citrus God. comes down and we were just gonna fade away with a stab earthquake however the citrus berry is most likely going to get the walrus out of out of uh, Earthquake snipe range, if you will. And I think we just roll the crit because if we swap in to Greppa or Shuka, they both die. They absolutely both die to an ice type move or a water type move. Citrus is going to die. I think we have to roll the dice and let Figgy fly. I think we have to let the Flygon go for it all and just rinse repeat our thick fat video here as Figgy wants to go flamethrower, but we learned our mistake from last time having the thick fat ability. So this Walrus looks at us with such disdain. We drop back with the Earthquake. Okay. Okay, hope it can snipe in the citrus berry was absolutely the difference he uh the walrene sees through the disguise the blizzard comes down and figgy drops we lose three pokemon we absolutely lose three pokemon to the hardest counter in this run glacia completely flexing and now we have one hope one dream can we get shuka in there the sand slash comes down and i do believe glacia is out of full restores i was kidding she is not as we drop back with a brick break but we get a monstrous critical hit and if Shuka can outspeed which she can she drops back with one more brick break the wall rain is defeated and this is the furthest we've ever gotten in this run good golly g all righty it's time for drake if we can beat drake there's only steven left so we're down to three pokemon we chuck out our handy dandy sand slash to get that setup cheese underway here the sand attack comes down as the dragon claw connects from the cute and cuddly little shell gone we get a nice toxic down as well we see through that 85 percent accuracy as a rock team comes down we're going to take a tiny tiny bit of damage but the speed drop could be exponential as this fight continues and we already lose the speed battle so that rock tomb was really big in that regard as we get another sand attack down sand slash knowing what she needs to do knowing what we can accomplish with this setup strat we send out citrus our swamper dodging the dragon claw the sand attack paying dividends here and now we can drop back with the ice beam and now because we set up in such a manner we don't have to worry about a speed drop from the rock tomb because if shelgon lived on lived from the ice beam we'd be in trouble as we drop back with another ice beam and altaria also falls the never melt ice doing wonders here absolutely citrus going in for another ice beam gets outsped by the flygon sets up a sandstorm but that should not be a problem as the ice beam is four times super effective and it takes down the dragon that only leads two pokemon left on drake's side of things and guess what it's another flygon so can we live this dragon breath no paralysis absolutely beautiful stuff we dodge that drop back with one more ice beam and flygon is deleted that only leaves the big the bad salamence comes down the intimidate will not be a factor as citrus shakes that off leaning into the special attack the sandstorm absolutely chips the salamence instead of us doing wonders we tank the dragon claw no problem drop back with an ice beam it is four times super effective and the ace falls drake is defeated three pokemon me and steven let's go <laughs> okay this is it 
fourth and hopefully final attempt. We got three Pokemon against Steven Six. This is phenomenal. This is fantastic. This is why you play the game. The Skarmory comes down and we open up with the Golem. So Skarmory has keen eye, so we could not set up with the Sand Attack strats. So we are going straight into our Roly Poly here. We get the defense curl down. The Steeling is stab and super effective, but thankfully the defense holding on there, not being too much damage as we get a critical hit rollout. We're coming in on that defense curl rollout. Cheese, we get another rollout. Skarmory drops into the red. The floor store comes down. Number three in the rollout hype train is coming in hot here. It is neutral because of the seal typing and we almost one shot Skarmory holds on with one hp and if that could have cleared the bird we would be in such a safe space and that means Skarmory tanks the full damage of the fourth roll the agron comes down this is going to be a five roll rollout it's going to be four times not very effective and it takes down the steel behemoth are you serious this golem does not care and now the armaldo comes down who can absolutely one shot with a water pulse potentially we could go in for the explosion we could go in for the earthquake we could roll the rollout here it all depends on what we want to do do we out speed the armaldo i don't think we do i absolutely don't think we do what do you do in a situation like this well what we're gonna do is we are going to roll the earthquake here it's going to be neutral damage since armaldo is bug rock so the bug holding us back here but it is a stab earthquake and we do massive damage the water pulse comes down we hold on with one hp grip holds on with one hp fades with an earthquake and armaldo is gone golem has successfully taken down three pokemon and you know what that means it's time to say goodbye greppa looks at swamper she looks at the sand slash and says this one is on me as we hover the explosion as greppa gives us a hug for one last time she fades away into the abyss with the explosion does she take the cradley almost cradley holds on with about five to ten hp but that opens up a clean swap into shuka the sand slash and now it's a potential 2v3 the spike damage on top we drop back with the brick break it is going to be super effective as steven full restores the cradle absolutely holding on to the fossil pokemon cradley taking massive damage 40 percent hp off the top of the brick break comes down bringing cradley to five percent hp the confused right across the board the sand slash is confused what will shuka do shuka holds on as the floor store comes in and cradley is healed back to full again we have to contend with the confusion as we hurt ourselves and shuka is in trouble however we snap out of confusion on the next turn and we get a massive brick breakdown but cradley has giga drain it is stab super effective and shuka holds with 59 hp cradley floating about what is that 80 percent as a citrus berry heals us back up to 89 another brick break comes down it is super effective bringing cradley to about 35 percent hp another giga drain is here can we hold on with no hp yes we can we hold on with two hp we hold on with two hp this is for golem this is for the squad cradley comes down with five hp left to its name a ancient power with the fade and that leads citrus our starter swamper versus three pokemon as spikes comes down and hurts us we drop back with the ice beam cradley falls and now it is a one v two against steven it is a 1v2 for the win. The Claydol the clay comes down. We drop back with a stab. Super effective surf. It brings Claydol to about 30% HP. The stab earthquake comes down, but Claydol does not have a massive attack stat. We tank that, no problem. We drop back with a surf, and now it is Swamper versus Metagross. It is Swampert versus Metagross. Our ace versus Steven's ace. This is it. Both level 58 for the win. The entire Nuzlocke on the run. All four runs leading to this moment. All four attempts. Can this be the dream? This is it. It's us versus Metagross, and all we can do is drop back with an earthquake. It's going to be stab super effective, but Metagross's defense is disgusting. The earthquake comes down. Metagross holds on with 5 HP. Metagross holds on with 5 HP, and this is stab psychic. <laughs> it's a critical hit. Bring us to 11 HP. Citrus fades with a citrus berry, the signature. Metagross answers with his own citrus berry, and we outspeed with an earthquake. <laughs> citrus takes down Steven. Unbelievable, unprecedented champion Steven forks over everything. We take the trophy, and we secure the victory on the fourth and final attempt oh my gosh i can't believe it i can't believe we did it swamper you absolute monster oh my gosh the golem giving herself the sand slash bringing down the rest with her and then swamper takes the baton and finishes the race unbelievable i cannot believe it <laughs> as always thank you so much for your time i really do appreciate it and i will catch you on the flip. Peace.